Welcome to the first episode, technically second, but first episode of the Honda Fit Build Series. This is where I take my daily driver 2011 Honda Fit Sport and turn it into the ultimate daily driver machine. Episode 10 of the Honda Fit Build Series. Today's video, this would be like technically the hybrid episode because we're doing everything hybrid racing on the Fit Mode. Before we do that, we gotta give a special install and shout out to the homie Seb over at Seb's Garage. Today we're gonna be installing his CDV Delete Kit along with a brand new Clutch Master Cylinder. So, Seb. Thank you. I am wearing this shirt that I obviously is way too big for me, but it's nice because it's my shirt. I thought that like since it's oversized, oh, I'll just wear a large. This is a large. Look how big it is, dog. But it's nice because it has my shirt on. It's nice. Look at it. People slept on the little vintage tee, but it's all good, bro. It's all good, bro. I'm Look at this thing already ready to get screwed today i'm going to raise up the front a little bit it's a it's a little low with negative three degrees of camber it still rubs a little bit so i'm going to raise it up maybe like quarter of an inch to match the passenger side because the passenger side is actually a little higher so we're going to raise up the driver's side like quarter of an inch and uh yeah should be good like i mentioned the first action of business for today is getting this Brand new CMC in, and this master right here is going to delete the actual CDV since it's mounted onto the actual clutch master cylinder, unlike the GD3. So this would be like the first, I guess, um, install on YouTube of a GE8 Honda Fit having the uh, CDV delete valve using Seb's Garage Kit, which is this line, and he also provides you with a brand new CMC for I think 150 bucks ship. Wow, I just see myself. 150 bucks. If you want a better pedal feel, you, you want some spirited driving without that delay valve holding your ass back, and this kit right here is all you need, playboy. I have a link down to his Instagram below. So without further ado, let's get this video started. It's super bright outside, and I can't really see how much um, light or lack of light is being displayed on my LCD screen on my camera. So I'm gonna try my best. I might should just film this on the iPhone, honestly, but we have to, this line right here is what Seb gave us to replace on our CMC. Yeah, let me switch to iPhone so I can show you guys everything, cause there's no way I can show y'all what the hell is going on right now. <laughs> All right, now we're on the iPhone, you guys can be able to see everything. So right here, this line, goes all the way down to that right there as you can see I believe that's what we're gonna be replacing today along with the CMC which is right sucked up in here I, I, I can't get to it it's tucked up right in there so we have to remove the two bolts from the inside and I believe once we remove the two bolts on the inside we can just push the uh, clutch master forward and out of the firewall and then we're able to really just remove it from here i ain't gonna hold you bruh the gd3 clutch delete delete valve kit is way simpler than the damn ge i tell you that my friend 
But yeah, that's pretty much what we gotta do. So we're gonna start off by draining the CMC fluid. We don't need to have anything leaking and killing our paint. Oh, you like that Zosh MFG oil cap reservoir cover? ZoshMFG.com, baby girl. So I went ahead and removed the two 12 millimeter nuts that holds on the CMC from inside the car. Once you have that removed, you are almost there, my friend. Keep going. Now making your way back into the engine bay, you have to remove a bracket that holds on the CMC line. It's two 10 millimeter bolts. So it is about to go down. So I don't know how far I'm gonna get on the project for today. I should roll up the windows for damn sure. But uh, update so far, I removed the bracket that holds in the clutch line and all that stuff. Now I just have to unbolt it from here. You're supposed to use a 10 millimeter flare wrench, but I don't have a flare wrench. So I'm gonna try my 10 millimeter uh, regular wrench. Hopefully that gets it off. If it does, we are money bags. If it doesn't, I am. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's good. It is raining outside, but that ain't gonna stop me because I forgot, why well, I didn't forget. I got this tent at Walmart a couple weeks back and I was like, hey, it is perfect. So now we're able to continue our video. Uh, you guys have seen me pick up the flare wrench from AutoZone, so we're gonna go ahead and loosen out. Uh, I should probably film an iPhone. Out with the old. So what we have to retain from the OEM unit or whatever unit you have, we gotta retain this little pin and this right here. We need these two items. We need these two blood clot items, all right? All this right here, all of this right here is gone. We don't need this, we don't need this, and we don't need these. But we do need these, and we do need these. We don't need these because it comes with our new kit, which is right here, not getting wet. So we have everything right here that we need. Old one is out. Oh, this is OEM too. Nissan. So this has been in the car probably all its life, because I doubt the guy replaces with an OEM unit. So that's crazy. 200,000 miles on that thing. Now we're going to this right here. So I already removed what I need to. This is a 17 millimeter. Hold that in place while you use your flare wrench to get the uh, line off. I removed the Clutch Master Reservoir so I can get the line off, but now that's back on. I got the delete valve line, the new clutch line on. Everything is on. Even on the inside, I button up the inside. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, out of every car I've ever dealt with when it came to replacing the CMC, this one is a pain in the ass. 1000%, the worst time ever. People say that, oh, the 8th gen's a Duh. to get to, or the RSX is a Duh. to get to, no. Get you a fit, bro. Well, then again, maybe I had to like remove the intake or whatever, but dude, having that thing tucked up in there, uh, bro, it was a pain in the ass. But taken care of, all I gotta do now is Remove this, well, tin there, remove that, and then I can start the process of bleeding the clutch, but I don't even have clutch fluid. Jesus! Uh, my dog Randy showed up, bruh, right after work. Forecast said it's gonna be raining seven days a week. It might rain, but for now, good morning, everybody. We're shifting focus towards our shifter cable bushings. We have one here and one on the back side. So it looks pretty simple. It just has like this little clamp thingy majig. You wanna just pull that out. And then your bushing is right here. You pop that out, I believe. I never actually done bushings a day in my life, but I did watch a YouTube video. It doesn't look too hard to do. I'm gonna go ahead and knock those Johns out so I can have some more precise of shifts in case I wanna feel spirited down the goddamn front straight of the highway. But yeah, that's what we got cooking up right now. And then I gotta do the detent springs. The reason why I have the front bumper off is because I thought, you know, since I'm not low, apparently I am a little too low, I can't uh, shove the jack all the way in there because it hits. So what I'm gonna have to do, jack up the car on one side, which isn't bad because I gotta adjust the suspension anyway. So I gotta raise the car up and then I'm able to plant the jack right underneath the gearbox. So when I remove the motor mount, I have access to the detent springs. That's what I got cooking up today. We might hit it on the iPhone for most of this stuff so you guys can see what I'm doing. I don't know how the quality of the lighting is on the camera itself. Jack is placed. We have one, two, three, four. This will be a 14, 17, 17, 17. This will just remove the mount so we have access to the detent spring bolts 
once we get those bolts loose, then we'll be able to remove the detent spring so we can install our hybrid racing springs. Part number right there. Yeah, buddy. So I went ahead and got everything removed. The bracket, you gotta remove this thing right here, which is by 12 millimeter. I guess that's just added weight so the mount don't come off, but remove that. Remove the battery tray bracket. You have two 12s on the bottom, two 12s right here. And once it's out the way, you have access to the two D10 springs. You only do two because the fit only requires two. Once you have the cap off, you're left with this right here and the washer. Make sure you don't lose that washer that are right there. There's a washer here on this one, and there's no washer on that one because it's on the actual gearbox. But this is the old spring. That is the new spring. And the reason why you do detent springs is so you can have more of a precise, stiffer, notchier gearbox feel. Like it'll remove some slop as well too. Detent spring, shifter cable bushings, and a new shifter will remove every amount of bit of slop. And the cool thing about the hybrid shifter is that you can adjust it to like, if you want an OEM feel, but a little stiffer, you can do that. If you want a spirited racing feel, you can do that as well. But with the detent springs and the shifter cable bushings, it's just gonna give you a better better feel when you're shifting. That's why you do the detent springs and you do the shifter cable bushings or shift cables if they have it available for your application. Battery tray is back on, gearbox mount is back on, and now it's time to do the shifter cable bushings. Now there's a, a C-clip, or not a C-clip, there's a clip that goes on top of this to keep the uh, bushing down, but um, I just tried to remove it without filming and that's my bad karma because now I just shot that thing somewhere and I lost it. So, but you wanna get this removed and I believe this just pops right up. Now for the back of the shifter cable, as you guys can see, we have that right there. So we need like a little needle nose plier to like pull that cable up while that clip, we gotta pull that up. And then like I stated, I think we just pop these up and then we just gotta press the new ones in. So here is the new one right here. Oh, look, we got new clips. Nice. Thank you, hybrid. You guys are the best. So here's the new bushing right here. This piece just pries off with a flathead. And then now to remove the bushing, you want to use your flathead and then pry against it like this. Just keep prying. Make sure you don't break anything. But pry that john off. So you want to pry the whole bushing out like this. It's probably an easier way to do this. But from what I can see, this is like the easiest way but then it just pops out like that. And now we gotta do is get our new one. Shout out to Hybrid for having the install guy on YouTube. So I got the bushing, I got the clip on. So you wanna get this clip on first. And then for this, all you have to do is just go in sideways and then boop, pop it down. But the bottom goes towards the bottom. So you literally just pop it on the big side like that and then rotate it down and then it's installed. That was like, how the hell did this work? And then I searched up Hybrid Racing uh, Install Guide. I went on their YouTube channel and saw that they did a install video on their brand new shifter bushing. These are brand new, like no more retaining clip. Like it's just two piece design, one, two piece. Well, with the little pins, three piece, but it's a two piece design and it's natural state and uh, makes the life so much easier. So this install is actually really simple. Shout out to Hybrid, bro. The best goddamn products ever. And if it's being a pain to actually include some assembly lube. But look at that, playboy. And these are also corrosion resistant, which means no more rust. Thank the Lord. So if it rains or whatever, this will not rust. None of this will have any rusting marks, bro. It's corrosion resistant. It's awesome. Cool. Ooh, look at that boy, Zosh. That boy Zosh got some hybrid rice shifter bushes, playboy. All right, super simple install. Now it's time to do the back one. Just pull that up, move everything, and we should be money. Fit is all on the ground. Now it is time to install this hybrid racing beautiful ass short shifter. Oh, and I'm gonna keep it on the settings of two and two. Hybrid Racing does have a install guide on their website in case you get lost in the sauce of my instructions because I'm not a damn teacher. So with that being said, I have a link down in the description box below to Hybrid Racing install guide of the shifter. But bruh, oh my God, that red, that red gonna be popping blood gang. So whoop, so whoop, so whoop, so whoop, so whoop, so whoop, so whoop. So for the removal of all the stuff to, in order to reach the shifter to remove it, it's fairly easy. You have a clip there, 
here. Then you have the clip on the other side. Then you have to remove the screw that's inside of here. Phillips screw right there. And we gotta remove our shift knob. So let's go ahead and get that done. This shift knob doesn't even fit this. You have to throw like a little insert thing on there, but. Once you have that screw removed and the two sides removed and the shift knob removed, you just wanna pop up on it, lift up, bring that John back like that, mom. Oh wait, hold on, we gotta do something about this right here. Cause this damn, th see, this thread piece holding me back. You messing up the flow. You're messing up production. But what you wanna do though is get this off. If you didn't have this little insert thingy, you wanna have that issue. Yeah, then you get greeted with the shifter though. Ooh and we got four bolts to remove. We got these two clips to remove using our little trim clip removal tool, whatever you want to call it. One, two. That's crazy, my fuel pump is right here. Fits are awesome. But now we're left with, we're gonna use a flathead to make this up and then this, and this right here is a twist to removal type piece. So once you have four of the bolts, once you have the four mounting bolts removed, now you have access to underneath. You have to remove this cable right there with that clip. And then these two clips right here at the bottom, they're spring loaded. So you just remove the springs in opposite direction of each other. And that pops out. And then this old thing is out of here. <laughs> the difference look at the difference dude crazy crazy <laughs> and we got some new drip to add onto this thing we so when you unbox your stuff from hybrid you were greeted with a spring for bolts and washers and a clip to clip on this shifter cable onto this one so now the spring this would be the hard spring what's already installed is a super hard spring pause ponder wordplay if you want a less aggressive shift then you wouldn't install this spring for a softer play but we ain't rocking like that we're gonna have this thing on super hard Lava. you feel me all the juices we're not gonna use none of these bolts because we have some drip Howard has some dress up bolts so we're gonna install these instead and make it look good with that red on red bruh Bruh, five star blood ain't so good. So here is the shifter installed. Everything is ready to go. So I have the settings on two, which means I think this is less aggressive, I believe. I don't know, but this right here feels good. This feels phenomenal. So I'm actually gonna have to remove this so I can put everything back together. But yeah, now it is time to assemble everything and go for a test drive. We got the hybrid racing shifter installed, the D10 springs installed, the shifter bushings installed, the new clutch master cylinder with the CDV delete installed. Shout out to Seb's Garage, shout out to Hybrid Racing. You guys made this whole entire video possible. Gotta give thanks and glory to the most high. That's you, Snoop. I can't get over how good this looks, bruh. Like, bruh. This is a smooth shifter. I have it in my Integra and I have it in my eighth gen. Now I have it in my fit. Every car I've actually had, aside from the CRV dice to own, all had a hybrid shifter. And I never had any issues, nothing, bruh. Like, it's just always been smooth and crispy. It's all I need, bro. Mm. I have my rod on like the highest setting so I can get a less aggressive shift. Like, it's really smooth. When I lower this rod, it'll get way more shorter. The throw would be insanely short, but right here, this is perfect. Fit is donezo. Stoked. Okie dokes, it is time to go for a ride with the shifter. 
the CDV delete, the bushings, detent springs, me and Shorty and Randlow is going to the gym. Oh my God. Oh my God. Night and day difference. Oh, this thing is sweet. Oh yeah. This is nice. The delete valve gone, dude, the pedal feels it's firmer. You can like, it's weird, but you can actually feel like the pedal, like, I don't it's weird to say, but like the, it feels like you're driving a stage two clutch type thing now. Like it's way better. Slow stock clutch. I adjusted my pedal to where like it catches exactly where I want it to catch. The shifter, this is a night and day difference. Holy shit. This feels great. the shifter the bushings the detent springs honestly bro this thing drives so damn good like i know it's my job quote unquote my job to like sell you on certain things from companies that sponsor the channel but uh i'm not that guy i really only want to promote what's good and if a company sent me something and i reviewed it and it's bad uh then it's bad you know what i mean like that's i'm not gonna you know do anything for a quick buck but I must tell you, bro, the CDV delete, the bushings, the detent springs, the fucking shifter, bruh, this thing is, all, dude, the fit drives so damn smooth. Like, I see why people use these as, like, Sunday Cup cars or there's a whole series on it. Like, there's nothing funner than driving a slow car fast, or at least trying to go fast. But like, I don't know what it is. This car just drives phenomenal with like this this shifter. The way the clutch pedal feels is just like, uh, it's like you can feel the fluid going through it. Like it's the weirdest shit ever, but it's so nice, bro. It's so nice, dude. Like you, I don't know. This feels great. Like I, I'm, I'm sold. I think when I do my top five mods of the Honda Fit, uh, I, bro, Easily the CDV delete shifter coilovers, like, bro. I could have made a video here, but I need to milk it, you know. What I mean, we need to get views on this side of the town. But as a review, like, as an initial review, driving so far, I only drove probably like 15 miles, maybe not even that. Uh, th it's phenomenal, it's 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 worth the money. It's so good. It's so good, dude. This car is such a fun thing to drive. Like, it's such a blast driving this thing, bro. I love it, man. This is awesome. Y'all gonna hear me say how awesome and how fun this thing is to drive, like, literally. It's so fun. Like, it's so smooth. Downshifting is fun. So cool, man. car ever made with the stock motor like so you have a k-series imagine with a k-series damn that's insane i like the stock motor though a lot of people think i'm gonna go k-swap on the fit and i don't think i will like i i like this motor like i don't want nothing crazy out of a car i already have an integra that's k-swap i have a hns k24 swap like i don't need another k-swap honda in my life i'm not kyle i right? <laughs> this is dope though i like this